Week 2, Lesson 3, Bringing Up Father. So far this week, all of our comics have been solely featured in newspapers at the time of their release, and this comic follows that trend. At the end of the century, comics were featured in newspapers or magazines. Bringing Up Father was promoted through them. Written by George McManus, this comic was originally untitled when it was made in 1913, but became known as Maggie and Jigs, or vice versa because of the two main characters' names. The comedy was about an Irish family trying to assimilate into American culture. What made Bringing Up Father worth mentioning is that in 1919, it collected some of its strips and sold them in a pamphlet form for 25 cents. This tactic of distribution made it the first comic book pamphlet or comic book issue to be sold. As we're going to see next week, this changed everything. Free from the restrictions of the newspapers, comics could now tell their stories faster than a page per day. People could easily reread the comics again and again and get a complete story. Publishers could focus exclusively on releasing comics. This simple idea gave new life into the medium, which forever changed the way comics were made. So, what were the types of humor that demanded to be collected in a pamphlet? Let's take a look. We see that both characters are dressed outside their usual attire for a costume party. Possibly a bit of visual humor with that alone. Maggie says, How do you like this masquerade gown? I represent a fairy queen. And her husband Jiggs replies, I'm glad you told me. I thought you was an airship. One panel in and we get a joke. This comic was made before jetliners, so the term airship meant blimp. He's calling his wife fat. That type of joke usually comes at the end of the strip for a punchline, but here, it's used at the beginning. Fresh, remember, you're a knight. What knight? I feel like a stove. This is a play on words, and you can only see it visually. The K in knight is silent, but the way Jiggs uses the word gives us no hint that he misunderstands it. But if we read the dialogue, he uses knight without the K in it. So even though these two are married, there's a failure in communication. Maggie, send for the fire department! We see his cigar has disappeared, and now he's overreacting for the sake of a joke. Finally, on the last panel, we see Jig squirming in discomfort as smoke leaks out of his armor. My cigar dropped in this armor! Maggie looks like she's about to faint, also overreacting to the situation. In these four panels, we see slapstick comedy, costume comedy, insult comedy, situational comedy, and subtle comedy with the dialogue. But the situation ends here. We don't get another 12 panels of Jake stripping down to get back a cigar. It didn't have ongoing stories like Little Nemo in Slumberland did. This is the sort of humor that's still found in many newspaper comic strips, like Blondie, Sad Sack, Foxtrot, and hundreds of others. The thing about the humor that stands out about Bringing Up Father compared to the other humor comic strips that came after it is that the jokes here seem more mean-spirited than their competitions. So what happened to Maggie and Jigs? Their comics continued until the year 2000 when they finally stopped printing original material. Their earliest comics are now in public domain and available for free. They starred in silent cartoon shorts, which I've been unable to find, short live action skits, a radio show, a stage play, and even some feature length films. Jigs also serves as the insignia for the US Air Force's 11th Bomb Squadron. So, why is Bringing Up Father so important to this course? Because it was the first comic strip to escape the confines of the newspaper and get its own pamphlets. Questions to contemplate. What are the advantages of selling comics and pamphlets instead of newspapers? Why do you think Bringing Up Father had such longevity? <laughs>